Yo, what's poppin'? I am gonna be doing basically the same thing, but I'm gonna be putting the actual footage in the background, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so first day of the day, first game of the day, London Spitfire versus Vancouver Titans. Both of these teams won 0, or 0-1, rather, uh, and this ends up being a 3-0 victory for London. Uh, so first up, uh, Oasis, to, it ends up being 2-1 London, so you have London fielding Sparker, Backbone, Hottie, Admiral, and Landon versus Vancouver fielding Psycho, Aspire, False, Masa, Sky, Reaper. Um, first up on University, we have London doing their standard rush, Soldier May, Lucio Bap, with Ryan, and Vancouver playing the Echo, Soldier, Doom, Lucio, Ana. Um, I like the Echo into the Rhine, should be able to get a lot of value here. Um, Backbone's put off the map by Masa, and Lenin goes deep into the Vancouver spawn. But Vancouver get the first cap, but as soon as Lenin come back from their spawn, they flip with a total percent on their thing. Uh, Aspire swaps Genji, which I'm not sure why he does this. Uh, Aspire known for as a hit scan player, and Genji into a rush comp. I feel like Soldier should get more value here, probably, but I don't know. What uh what the overall goal is. Um back one swaps over to Sombra off May. And Doom is actually struggling to find value into Ryan here. And uh London ended up capping hundred and two thirty nine. So I feel like the Doom should probably find more value because he just punches the run around and they but I don't know. Not how it happened. Uh so we're going to City Center, which ends up being hundred to ninety nine for Vancouver, London running the same comp. Uh, Vancouver running a Genji Soldier Winston Lucio Ana. Uh, London is moving through the high ground to clear Vancouver and then they move to the point. False Primal goes big for Vancouver to cap and there's 70% for London. Uh, London ended up flipping back over time. Hattie decides to shatter Oxygen. And the longer the fight go, uh, I find the better odds for Vancouver has to win them because they have better chances to get better antis. And then as soon as the, the London comp is antied, they basically lose at that point. Their lamp is forced. A lot of uh, dive can come out, and London's comp is just built around sustaining and taking space. So, if they can't do that, they, they will lose. Uh, moving on to Gardens, which ends up being 100 to 73 for London. You get the standard rush into the Genji Soldier Winston. Um, London take the high ground, and Vancouver decide to stage main. Uh, London end up catching Vancouver and Hookah, and they end up flipping it. Uh, Backbone is trying to deny Hookah space on May but he gets caught and dies. Um, Hadi is just being a living rat on the point. He is like charging off the point through red megas and stuff. Uh, like he's, he's like a tracer, but he has 650 HP and a giant hammer. Um, Vancouver flipped the point with London at 73%. Uh, Backbone does a sneaky flank through high ground and blizzards and sky reaper. And uh, there are a bunch of ults used, but London ended up taking the first map. So that map London is or Vancouver's struggling to find uh, good dives under this put together rush comp and uh, there's no antis coming out to cut the London healing which we saw from uh, Boston I believe Boston was was doing it very well uh, Vic, or not not Boston uh, Shock whenever London played Shock um, they, were, they were getting a massive antis off of Finn and he was and then they just weren't living with Vancouver and Sky Reaper are struggling to find that. Uh, we went to Kings Row, which ends up being 2-1 for London. Uh, no no changes in personnel. Uh, on the Vancouver offense, you have Soldier May, Ryan, Lucio Bap, Standard Rush, Genji, you get a Widow pick. Um, what's Lucio Ana? So Aspire on the Widow, and he actually swaps over to the Sojourn, but it only lasts like a fight, and he ends up swapping uh, to Hanzo. I think Sojourn's supposed to be good because you can charge up your railgun on shields. I'm not sure if that's true. I haven't tested it, and I didn't really take note. But if that is the case, he should she should be good in the Rhine, I think. Um, Lennon cut back, and they with with window. Uh, How do shatters oxygen? But they end up clearing up Vancouver, and they get no ticks. Um, Masa beats into the back line and dies, but he creates enough space so Vancouver get two ticks before they actually lose. Um, false swaps over to Doom, and Backbone's cut by Aspire. Backbone swaps over to Tracer. Uh, Nano Falls ends up getting 3 in overtime, and they have 2.30 entering second. Uh, Psycho swaps over to the Echo, which I, again, am a fan of, of a fan of, into the Rhine. Um, London are playing back on the third corner. They're giving a lot of space here, and they end up winning the fight, but Vancouver fight back, and they kite back. Um... 
Hottie walks at him, and then there's 40 seconds remaining. And Linda pushes up to the choke. Hottie shot his fall. Psycho copies Ryan, and he goes down very fast. And uh, London stops the uh, push with uh, Kurt just at the third corner of second point. Moving into London's offense, we have Alonzo May, Ryan, and Lucio Bapp. And Recover decide they want to take this rush duel against the rush one trick team and run may soldier it's not sure what's going on here um sparker immediately finds an arrow onto aspire's head and sparker hanzo is just pumping out mad damage and aspire actually swap over to hanzo as, as well but london still enters second with five minutes and 30 seconds uh how he misses a shatter on false uh and false gets a point blank shatter onto sparker who is still doing a lot on hanzo uh, we could end up winning the fight, but the card is close to the checkpoint with 333. Uh, False gets dragon, and there's no lamp that comes out, which I found odd. I feel like this should have been at that point in the fight, and London ended up winning with 245 on the clock. Uh, this Barker Hanzo was very impressive, and it did a, it did a lot for uh, did a lot for London. Uh, moving on to Route 66, we have Shockwave in for Psycho. So this is the first time we've seen Shockwave and Aspire together, which is interesting. Shockwave, of course, 100% uh, maps won against Boston. Uh, having won both of his, the ones he played. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, moving into London's offense, we get London not on their rush one trick, but they're actually doing Soldier, Genji, Winston, Luciana. And Vancouver's opting to go for a Widow, Genji, Doom, Luciana. Uh, Shockwave gets two, but I didn't see the shots. Uh, Backbone went down, and London, the London dive hasn't really happened. Like, they're on the dive comp, but it hasn't, they haven't really gone very far. Um, Aspire swaps over to Genji, uh, again. I had him on Genji there, I don't know what he was on before, but he, he swapped over to it. And, I think it was, it might have been Tracer or something, I'm not sure. But, he swaps over to Genji. Uh, London ended up entering second with four. It's really not... Not too inspiring at this point. Uh, Lennon got a good dive off, I guess. Um, not a lot happening for Vancouver either. Shockwave is the only one who really has any fight in them right now. Um, London Car barely starts moving at three minutes. Uh, Backbone Blades, the Venom, a Venom Mine on third point. He, uh, he he had to get that Venom Mine that was back there. It was doing too much. Uh, false swaps over to Winston. Shockwave hits a flank, but he doesn't find anything, and London just entered the third point with 230. Uh, Shockwave is now on 76. Uh, I think he was on 76 before. No, I don't remember. Uh, but Aspire swaps over to Reaper. Hotty Primals, and he goes down to Aspire. Backbone Blade gets more oxygen. Uh, Sparker Nano Visor Beast gets a lot, and the card's very close to the end of this point. Uh, Vancouver come out, but they force London back. Shockwave decides to visor his demons. But I guess it results in London not triggering OT because of the Vancouver zone. So the Shockwave killed the demons, and it worked. So, that was good. Uh, Vancouver on the offense now. London still running uh, the Winston, but Soldier Tracer this time. And uh, Vancouver opting to Widow Genji. Still don't know why. Aspire's the one on Genji here. I would expect, I would think that Shockwave Genji plus Aspire Widow would maybe be a better composition, but I don't know. Uh, Van pushes the card to the corner. London dives them, just them short. And uh, Shockwave... Uh, swaps over to Soldier now. Uh, London is looking very strong on big girls. Backbone Blade gets this guy, this guy barely. He barely hangs on. is like 6 HP or something. Um, Aspire is getting a lot done on the Genji, actually. Uh, it's cool. And Vancouver enters second with 317. Uh, Vancouver wins fight, and they push the card to the corner. Uh, False Primal stuffs the door for more push. But London ended up Duke coming out and recontesting, and the landed nade gets false and sky, and Vancouver is forced to reset. Backbone gets two, but and Masa unfortunately beats too late, and then Vancouver forced to reset. Uh, Backbone hits a nano blade, and it diffs, it diffs Shockwave's nano visor, and Vancouver are stopped, and they don't even get to go to third point. So my overview here is I'm not sure if Vancouver just don't know how to play versus Rush. But Sky Reaper could not find the big antis, and they could not win the fights off of it. Uh, false got tank diffed by Hottie, especially on the Ryan. You just if you're false and you're an off tank player, you're not you're not gonna beat Hottie in the Ryan duel. Um, so London ended up winning it with Rush, and they beat Vancouver on the Winston Mirror too, and they proved that they aren't just Rush one tricks. 
uh, they at least have the option to go under Winston. And the Tomlinson player of the match goes to Sparker, who just took the control of the game on King's Row. And uh, big Hanzo gameplay, big Soldier gameplay. Great, good stuff. We ran to Paris, Florida. So I was calling my mom because it's Mother's Day. And I didn't pay attention. And that's far more important than Overwatch League. So I got some notes from Steven instead. Uh, he said that Florida's the better team. Looks like the better team. Uh, Glister and Drew Drew and Khan are all doing well, though. Uh, Checkmate is differing Naga hard, though. Uh, someone is playing decent. Um, Majed is playing very aggressively, and he's sometimes getting caught. But it's paying off more often than it isn't. And Florida's hard weighing off antis often. And it looks like they're just capitalizing on antis and trying to, to get antis as a win con. Um, Glister is playing better than Hydron, but Hydron's still holding his own. And uh, Anima is doing well with some great beats. And so I don't really know what happened, but sure. Uh, I get back now on Midtown on Florida's offense, and Glister's Nanovisor is doing very good at two minutes. Uh, Hydron gets a pick on Naga early, but Jed has, hits a big ante, which Steven said he would, and they force Florida back. Uh, Glister picks Checkmate before he can blade at 30 seconds. Khan sleeps in Nano Naga. And a Glister Visor goes massive, and Florida ends up winning Midtown 2-1. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe Florida stopped Paris right at the end before third. So, shout out to that. So, we got the Circuit Royal, where Florida Mayhem made an illegal play. And... I don't know. They hit the Maywall TP over the building on the offense to get onto the bridge and get on top of the Sigma comp with Rush. Uh, but Overwatch League deemed it illegal and forced them to replay their offense, which I wasn't there for because I had to go get groceries. So I caught their first offense, but it didn't, it didn't happen. So I don't think it's worth covering. It's just like fake. Uh... Yeah, not great. But, well, I can briefly talk about it. Florida basically rolled them, is my summary. Uh, yeah, Florida just, this is the rush comp, but Sigmar can't really stand on their card. They couldn't get, they couldn't really get any real card pressure. So, Florida ended up rolling point pretty, pretty easily, and it full capped it out. So that's that's the gist of that. Um, moving on to Paris's offense, which I did catch, and it is real. Um, Paris uh, running Widow Genji Zarya Lucio Ana versus the Genji Widow Doom Lucio Moira. Um, Florida set up on the spawn high ground and early and win the early fight. Uh, someone swaps to Winston. Florida win the fight around the bridge corner, and Hydron is clicking guys' heads on the Widow. Uh, Glister swaps over to Soldier 76. Florida take er, the early fight by the spawn room. Uh, and Vestoli gets a big grab. Someone knocks around the Naga Blade and Primal, but Paris still went out to fight. And Majid gets some, hits some big abilities, and Par Paris are stopped around the bend. Uh, Florida said are playing very aggressively, and they're, pl they're making sure that they're the ones setting the pace here. They're diving in early. And Hydron's just sitting back on a Soldier this time, I believe he swaps to. And he is doing big damage. And Florida just holding out this payload at the bend. Checkmate. Uh, at one point, he tried to hide like right beside in a little corner, but he ended up getting caught. And Naga hits a big blade. But um, and Khan gets a big sleep on Hydron, and Paris start moving the cart uphill. But yeah, they uh, only get it to, like the end of second. They don't fully get it. And then Florida end up playing their offense back, which I didn't get to catch because, again, Mother's Day and grocery shopping. But from what I saw of this match, uh, Glister did play very well. And Naga had his moments, but was largely diffed by Checkmate. Uh, Sir Majed went crazy. Checkmate went crazy. And Hydron was holding his own. Uh, someone stayed off Hog, which is big. And uh, from what I saw, Florida looked like the better team. Overall, uh, I'm gonna give the Tomlinson player to match the Sir Majed because 
that boy, he was hitting his, he was hitting his things, hitting his cooldowns. So, yeah, big. Moving on to another match that I admittedly did not catch, but that's okay. Uh, I watched back like some some stuff, saw the highlights and all that, which I should have right over right this way. Uh, so. Washington, who was 1-0, versus Dallas, who was 0-1. Of course, they lost uh, decimatedly to Houston. Uh, looking on here at Lijon, which ends up being 2-0 for Dallas. We have Washington playing Decay, Happy, Mag, Krillin, and Opener. And Dallas playing Edison, Sparkle, Fearless, Fielder, and Chio. Uh, on Control Center, Washington end up rolling out with a Junkrat, Cassidy, Ryan Bath Lucio. I think this is the first time we've seen Cassidy, which is interesting from Happy. Uh, and Dallas play Reaper, Genji, Doom on a Lucio. Uh, Washington take the first cap, but Dallas end up winning the fight. Mag shatters a Sparkle Blade, and they end up flipping the point with 46% for Dallas. Uh, the case swaps over to Tracer. Washington fight Dallas with Reaper in the dark room. So Dallas end up winning that fight and flipping with 53% for Washington. And then from there out, Edison hits a special move. Edison fearless cap at round one, and they win 153. So not sure why Washington wanted to take a fight with the Reaper dude in the small space, but they thought it was the play. Uh, moving on to Gardens, which ends up being 100 to 99 for Dallas. It's a bit of a flip floppage at the point at the start, but Dallas come out on top with 60% for Washington. Uh, Fielder hits a big nade on Decay, and Mag gets slapped from him, but Washington still get the point despite that. Uh, and a Fearless Primal comes up short, and Washington can control at 39% for Dallas. Uh, Dallas end up coming back in overtime, however, and Sparkle does a lot with Blades and Nanos to end up winning that round. So I can't speak too much on the pacing, but uh, there was there was a very long period of overtime, and like it was very close at the end. But uh, Sparkle will end up being the difference maker. Uh, moving on to Eichenwald, which is 3-2 for Dallas. And we have Hanbin in for Fearless now. So Washington on this uh, on the on the defense are running Genji Soldier, Winston on a Lucio. Uh, Dallas on the offense running Reaper, Genji Zarya on a Lucio. Uh, Washington's forced back to Kite. And they end up giving 42% to Dallas on the point before they come back to the point and start winning fight off of a massive antique from Krillin. Uh, Dallas do end up having up first though. Uh, Humbin gets a big grab to stop a Washington engage. Edison hits a big blossom when the cart enters the bridge. And uh, Humbin ends up swapping over to Doom and Dallas has cap at the second point. Uh, Happy hits a nano visor to shut down a sparkle blade who didn't have nano but we see, we've seen that visor is a pretty decent way to shut down blade consistently and with typically end up winning the 1v1 with heal station and running away. Um, Dallas struggles to gain real purchase going into third. A sparkle ends up swapping to Echo. The K hits to flex a Graviton Surge to stop Dallas from finishing at a push. And Dallas end up capping out with 30, 13 seconds remaining. Uh, moving on to the Washington offense. We have... Washington playing Genji Soldier Winston on the Lucio and Dallas playing Reaper Genji Zarya on a Lucio. Uh Washington work down Dallas, really real grind fest, end up capping first with five minutes. So just playing playing like pretty meticulously, we're playing their cooldowns, playing their nades. Uh yeah, they end up they end up capping out. Uh Hanbin grabs uh, it stops the card as the gate opens and Dallas end up wiping them. Uh both, like all the teams use all their ults, but Washington come out on top to get some movement of the second. And Washington are very adamant to hold and take control of the castle high ground against Dallas. Uh, Washington end up getting the card to the end. Uh, the K blade is slipped by Fielder, and Mag Primal gets huge value uh, as Washington ends up entering third with 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And Sparkle again swaps over to Echo. Not sure why Echo's getting played most on this third point with the small hitbox or the small skybox but I mean if Sparkle wants to play Echo you let him uh, Hanbin gets a big grab on Mag but Happy Visor ends up wiping out the rest of Dallas but Dallas do eventually end up holding out and taking this map uh, moving on to Route 66 
we have Kalios and for Mag. Um, so this is, of course, signals that uh, Washington will probably play a Zarya comp, or yeah, that's the only real option here. Or Doom, I guess. Kalios could have been the Doom guy at this point. Uh, on Washington's offense, we get Washington playing Genji, Widow, Zarya, Ana, Lucio versus Soldier holding with Soldier, Genji, Zarya, Ana, Lucio. And there is not a lot going on. Washington's struggling to get past the first corner. Uh, and in fact, they struggle so hard that they don't do it at all, and Dallas dominate on the defense. Uh, next up, we get a. Well, while this is happening, one of the last fights. Fielder gets a big sleep on a Blading Decay, which could have maybe got them past that first corner, but Dallas end up just dominating them. And of course, not a lot of, not very far to go for Dallas. Uh, and Washington tried to do a spawn hold with a Zarya Widow Genji thing, but uh, it's not successful, and Dallas easily kept at the point. So, from my limited view of what was happening, uh, Dallas looked more and more dominant as the match went on. And maybe losing 3-0 to Houston was a fluke, or maybe Houston got a big stage buff from their crowd. Um, the kid did what he could for Washington, but ultimately wasn't enough. Uh, I did see Krillin make some good plays at one point, so it's not that it was only Decay, but Decay definitely, especially deflecting a grab and then losing the next fight, it's not not great. Um, the Tomlinson player of the match goes to Fielder. Saw him get huge sleeps, huge nades. Uh, dominant on the gameplay overall. Could have went to Sparkle. Actually, I'm changing it right now. It is going to Sparkle. He got them through that first point, first map. Fuck it. Feel they did great. Sparkle feels better. Moving on to the fourth match. Big number four, which I did catch all of because I wanted to make sure I saw, saw my boys Toronto play. Even though I predicted Houston the three of them. That didn't happen, and the 0-1 Defiant ended up 3 2 in the 1-0 Houston Outlaws. Uh, so, first up on Li Zhang, we have Toronto fielding Hisu. Uh, I wrote Genji, uh, but it's actually Hisu Finale, uh, Muse, uh, Chorong, and Twilight, versus Houston fielding Pelican, Merit, Dante, Lastro, Iris. Um, I'm Li Zhang Gardens. We have Toronto running Soldier Genji Winston Luciana versus Houston running an Echo Soldier Doom Luciana. Uh, so Muse Primals, uh, Iris and Merit. It's a little bit in. I was very I was watching the game more than taking notes at this point. Uh, Finale Blades in Toronto end up flipping at thirty percent when Houston have forty seven percent. Finale swaps the Tracer, which we will see a bit pretty often, and he ends up finding Merit, which is huge. Uh, Dante is moved off the map by Chirong, and Toronto clean up the point, and they're playing very strong at this point. Uh, so I believe it was 100 to 47 at this point, 100 to 50 ish, something like that. And Toronto's looking like the better team here for a little for most of this, which is which is pretty hype because don't expect it, but I've seen it all before where Toronto comes out strong. Um, next up, we have a night market with 100 to 50 for Toronto here as well. So we get Toronto running Soldier Genji, Winston Lucio Ana versus Echo Soldier Doom Lucio Ana. Uh, Dante is focused down, and Pelican is also focused down, and then Toronto cap first. Uh, Finale immediately swaps Tracer after the cap uh, off of the Genji, which is I don't know I don't know what they see. Maybe they saw that Houston was on Echo, and they said Tracer is better here. I'm not sure. What else it could be? Maybe they like it into Doomfist. I could see that. Uh, Dante goes down to the back line, which happens often, actually. But uh, it does allow Houston to move, to gain some space and swap the point at 27% for Toronto. But as soon as Toronto comes back and deal with them, uh, Lasser is forced to beat uh, beat a Mare Advisor. And they end up swapping the point back. Pelican also hits a copy, but it's 71% for Toronto. Um, Iris for her anti forces a beat. Uh, and Dante goes down again, and Toronto flips the point at 50% for Houston. And then Houston don't trigger overtime, Toronto win the map one. So it looks pretty dominant for Toronto here. I honestly thought my Pred was going to get boomed uh, right away. And Toronto's looking very good, and Dante is not looking as good as he was against Dallas. Whatever Toronto's doing into the Doomfist versus what Dallas was doing, Toronto is doing much better. 
Uh, so we have Kings Row, which I don't have the score here, but Houston ends up winning. Uh, so we have Toronto. No, no changes in team composition. Um, on Houston's offense, Toronto is holding with Soldier Tracer Winston Luciana versus an Echo Soldier Doom Luciana. We see this the whole time. Uh, Dante plays back at the high ground and looks for engages. Lastro ends up taking out Finale. And Houston enters second with five minutes. So not a big pushback from Toronto on this uh, first point defense. Uh, Nano Pelican takes out supports, and then they have four minutes pushing into the end of second. And then Houston win that fight too, and they enter third with 445. Finale swaps back to Genji off of Tracer, and Chirong beats to try and save Muse, but he is too late. And Finale is also disengaging at the time of the beat, so it's a poorly timed to beat. And Houston take this momentum and complete the map with 337. So Toronto honestly aren't even there for the defense and just get pushed in. Uh, moving on to the Toronto offense. We have Toronto starting on Widow, looking for picks quickly, but then swapping over the Soldier. Uh, again, Gigi Winston, Lucio Ana, so standard, versus Houston's Echo, Soldier, Doom, Lucio Ana. Standard, standard. Uh, Toronto win this first fight, and Dante looks for a recontest, but Toronto just ignore him as he touches a point and push onto his back line in second, and then they end up entering second with 450. So we see Toronto either heavily focusing Dante or ignoring him completely when they can run on the back line, which seems like a pretty good strategy into Doomfist in general. Because uh, after he uses his slam, he's basically he's basically out of commission unless he lands some punches. Uh, but they're not as big. The slow the slam slow is quite quite good. Uh, he supervises into the back line. He ends up getting kills and making more space. And then Toronto enter third with 430. So neither of these teams putting up much defense. Pelican copies Ana, and he hits, and then there's two nades that come out from Houston, and they do work. But he's the next fight. He pulls up and attack visors, and Toronto cap it out with a minute and ten less than Houston did. So Houston putting up more of a fight for defense, but neither of these teams can defend very well. Uh, and then we're on Toronto's offense, which I have two minutes to complete. We're under their standard soldier Genju Winston Luciana versus the standard Echo Doom comp variant. Uh, Toronto struggle until uh, Hisu gets a nano visor off when he ends up wiping in overtime. Uh, Merit gets a visor and Pelican dupes. And then Toronto's push is actually stopped before the choke, so they don't even get it through. And then, of course, with 3 minutes and 10 seconds for Houston, they uh, eventually end up doing it. And by eventually, I mean they immediately do it after the first fight. And a quote from Frags is, uh, when Finale is the best player alive, he is the best player alive. Which is true. I agree. Uh, so after Houston get that first fight, they're going to go for a recontest. And it looks like they're winning for a little bit, but then Houston back up a second with the regroup and they storm back and they win. So Toronto cannot defend Kings Row at all. Uh, moving on to Watchpoint Gibraltar, which was a 1 0 victory for Houston and very sad for a Toronto fan. No changes again. And on Houston's offense, we get Toronto running a soldier against you with some Brig Ana versus an Echo Soldier Doom Lucio Ana. Um, Muse can test the car, drops down before the car wash. As Muse goes down, Dante dumps up to the high ground. But uh, Pelican takes out Muse whenever he goes back up. Toronto are forced to kite back. And the Houston back line are in server. And there is enough peel or something, and they end up losing to a Toronto dive back there. Uh, I believe Finale ends up poking them out and getting good dashes on with Kenji. Uh, Pelican copies Ana again, which we've seen m multiple times at this point, uh, and hits some big cooldowns, and then Houston ends up second, going into second with 330. Uh, Pelican and Merit take like diagonal angles to pressure Toronto. Pelican way up on the Echo versus uh, Merit way back on the Soldier. Uh, but Twilight ends up getting a great sleep on Merit, so that strategy is basically doesn't do anything. Uh, Pelican copies a Brig, but he ends up falling off the high ground, so he gets no value off it. And then Houston get very stuck after that fight to enter second again. Uh, and in the overtime, they do end up getting enough pressure to push cart close to the end. But Toronto did look very good on watch point Gibraltar second, but so does everyone because that point is very hard to get into once that door closes. 
Moving on to Toronto's offense, Kenny G is a big brain coaching play, and they end up going hog bastion out of the gate. So uh, Muse gets a big hook onto Dante, and Bastion shoots at him, and then he dies for a big early kill. And this lets Toronto get the car through car wash easily with no pressure on them. Um, but Finale and Muse dive too deep uh, out, out of the LOS of Twilight, and they end up getting wiped. Now there's 225 on the clock, and Hisu swaps over to Soldier 76. Uh, Dante keeps pushing Toronto off of the high ground with his big punch ability. Uh, Nano Pelican gets supports as Muse gets nanoed, and then he gets slept as well. And there's 140, uh, and there's a scrappy fight. Toronto gets some car progress, but Muse jumps too deep again, and they don't even make it to second. So after a fantastic first point, a big strat with the, the Roadhog, you love it when those work, Muse gets a little overexcited and ends up feeding. <sighs> and then we move on to New Queen Street, which is Toronto hometown, which did not work out for them last time. Uh, no changes again in personnel, and we get Soldier Genji Winston Brigana against Genji Soldier Doom Luciana. I feel like that's not right. I feel like that breaks surely a Luciana way they were in Brig on this point. Probably a typo. Um, both teams made up the high ground. Muse goes down, so Merit ends up controlling the high ground and uh, winning the first fight. Uh, Finale will then swap over to Tracer. Twilight gets a fat nade on Dante and Houston loses the fight. Uh, Muse gets a primal slept by Iris, but Toronto recover and they end up taking the lead and getting to the checkpoint. Muse dies in the middle of the street at this point. Uh, this was actually not great. Uh, I feel like there should have been some healing there. He should not have been there. But, uh, yeah, he dies in the middle of the street, and then Dante gets a huge punch off, and Houston win the fight. But they don't get it all the way to the... They don't even get it to the halfway point, so the spawns don't reset. Trying to take the control bat, and Muse goes on goes crazy on juggles. And Toronto win this fight. It's pushed. There's a lot of back and forth stuff, right? But the overall pacing was... Toronto is is doing the pushing and more than the pulling, you know what I mean? Like they're the ones that uh they're controlling what's happening and they're really uh making the most of it. Uh moving on to the final map, Ilios. Which ends up being a two oh for Toronto, which was surprising. Just nice to see them make a bit of a comeback here. Uh ruins is a hundred to fifty with a soldier tracer, Winston Luciana. This is the Genji, Genji Soldier Doom Luciana. So Finale just starting on Tracer, so then fuck it. Um, Toronto take the first cap, but then Dante go, goes crazy on him. And flips to 20% for Toronto. And Dante goes crazy again, in like a like a 1v2 like two situation at the end of a fight. And he's like holding them back, but then he meteor strikes, and the point flips over. Because it can't come down fast enough. And Toronto end up capping with 46% for Houston. And I haven't written anything down because I guess I was just too hype with the boys. Uh, but Toronto looked pretty dominant there. Houston didn't even get any more percentage. It just, Toronto just pushed it out from there. Um, Lighthouse was 100-0 to zero for Toronto. Not a lot to say here either, actually. Toronto takes very hard control. And they are doing, like, they're all clicking. The dives are going crazy. The DPS are hitting their buttons. Um, Houston ain't even playing the game at this point, bro. You just got Toronto going. They're doing their thing. It's all working. It's like, it's like a, like a scale. Start of the, start of the match. Toronto going good. Dips back down. And at the end, it comes by parabola. Parabolic. Variance. Whatever, bro. They, they, Toronto got it. Um, so the overview is trying to look good at the gate. They had a close current zero, but neither team could defend, but Houston could defend better. Uh, but Houston did look better on the Kings row for sure. Uh, Defiant looked like they should have won out on Jib, to be honest, but they fumbled. And there's just it wasn't clicking right. The positioning for the Ana and the, for the Winston dives was not there. And maybe a bit too ambitious. Uh, but Toronto looked like the better team. You could argue on New Queen Street and Ilios. 
by a pretty good margin, and Houston were in the backseat the whole time. And I suspect that Houston's inflexibility may have hurt them in this matchup. Dante's doom had some pop-off moments, but it pretty much got figured out and focused down far more often than it was against Dallas. So I don't know if it's that Toronto know how to play against Doomfist well or what, but he was not doing what he was doing. Uh, and being unable to switch to Winston probably left the Outlaws pretty vulnerable at times. Uh, but the player of the match for me goes to Finale because when he's the best player, he's the best. Uh, showed up big time, and whenever they started clicking again, especially on New Queen Street and Ilios, it was uh, it was Finale really uh, that, that came back back into his own, you know. So yeah, uh, some small things. Probably gonna do a power ranking video tomorrow. Maybe discuss the Florida Mayhem stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, like, subscribe, have a good one.